Hello everyone and welcome to my automated wheatgrass production. In this video I'll go over an updated version of my bottom watering system as well as go over some new tests I've been doing on a uh, top watering system and comparing two different top watering methods. As you can see, I'm growing a lot of wheatgrass these days and not a lot of microgreens. That is because I've opened a small wheatgrass business and later on I'll expand to microgreens. And this business allows me to test the uh, automated system, whether it is the lights, the watering, the bottom watering system, the top watering system, my custom controller here controlling the air filter, the fans, the lights, everything, the watering, or even a custom bell siphon design that unfortunately I won't showcase because I think I got a good design and I'll want to finalize it and make it commercially available before showcasing it in case, in case someone uh, copies my design. Now you can see that the wheatgrass is healthy and I'm really happy because basically last weekend I planted these trays with uh, dry soil and dry seeds. The automatic, automatic top watering over here kicked in um, and watered all the seeds top watering until the germination was done. Then after the germination was done the lights would turn on and the bottom watering would kick in and start to, to water these plants. So for the past week, I've just came in, observed the system, make sure there were no leaks, make sure that the timing were good, that the crops weren't underwatered or that the drains were clogged and anything. And apart from that checkup, well, it, it went pretty well. There's only these two trays, you can see that they're not as high and that's because these um, black, flood trays are uh, they're actually not level so these plants are getting more water and these aren't getting enough so today i actually manually watered them and i'll work on making these two more level but the top one and the bottom one are fairly level and you can see that the crops are doing very well now let's get into the bottom watering aspect so in the previous videos i was basically i had a solenoid on every shelf and this solenoid if we pick it up is connected to uh, a water intake, right? So I have a main water pipe uh, going along the, the shelf and it connects to these solenoids. And if you go back, it goes to, of course, the reservoir. And now on the board, I have a small, uh, sorry, on the solenoid, I have a small board and if it focuses, you can see switches. So you can select which channel you want the solenoid to be on. Right now it's channel three. You connect the ribbon cable, you connect the water supply, and then you just place the uh, the solenoid on the rack. And then when uh, the uh, sol the schedule turns on channel three, so if we look at my Google Calendar right now, I've set a flood event to uh, channel three and seven. So seven is my pump. Now I manually turned it off just so I can sh quickly show it. And when I turn it on, the pumps turn on, it makes a lot of noise. Water gets pumped up. And if we check here, you can see that the watering is the water is flowing. And what will happen is that the water will fill up this shelf and the water currently you can see is not draining through my uh, drain, right? So the water will get to a certain level. After a certain level, there's a, a bell siphon here that I'll talk more about when, uh, when it's available. I don't want people to copy the design. But when the water reaches a certain level, this siphon will kick in, the water will drop in the next shelf, and then the same thing will repeat itself. So they're cascading and this will fill up to a certain level, drain to the next one, drain to the next one. So with one solenoid on the top of the system, I'm watering all the shelves. And uh, I can easily expand this or I can have more control on per shelf if, if I just put the another solenoid here, which uh, this one is connected to something else, so I won't do. Let me turn this off for the noise. But yeah, this has proven to work very well for the growth of the microgreens. Uh, however, I was a bit fed up of the whole germination. I wanted to automate it. And so what I did is now I have these top watering systems. So if you look, this one is a plastic version. Come on, focus. It's a plastic version. And I've been testing another uh, metal version. And these are basically um, misters or sprinklers uh, that top water. I'm not gonna run the top watering here, but uh, today I'll be uh, planting new crops and I'll show you how this works right now. Mm -hmm. 
There we go, eight trays planted and eight more to go. But since I'm only working with one rack right now, I don't have a second. The second is getting installed tomorrow. Well, uh, I have half of it planted. And on this second level, I am running the, uh, is it the plastic? Yes, it is the plastic uh, sprinklers. And on the bottom level, I'm running the metal sprinklers. So these are the two sprinklers that I've been testing. This metal one is roughly half a dollar and it creates a really nice thin mist and you have these quick disconnects that are very practical to quickly disconnect or reconnect and arrange your tubes. And then you have this plastic version which is roughly 10 cents that uh, creates a bit of a more a stronger stream of watering. Uh, so it's cheaper but uh, the water is a bit more intense. Now if we look at this uh, system, if we uh, create an event that says flood one, four, and seven. So one is the channel, it's this channel. Four is the upper top watering channel and seven is the pump. So if we take this event and drag it right now, right, there we go, event saved. The automated, con well, my uh, custom controller will connect to internet, fetch this data, see it, and then there we go, the controller turns, the uh, watering turns on. And you can see that the top is, uh, the plastic ones are quite intense jets that are watering the uh, seeds, the dry seeds, and at the bottom, these uh, metal ones, if you look at this one, it creates a big, a bit of a finer mist. However, what I found is that if you look at this currently actually, it's clogged. This one is clogged and it's the third time that I have to remove it and unclog it. Not only that, the mist is so fine that it goes a bit everywhere and it takes a long time to water these seeds. And uh, as well as you see this one is starting to get clogged and it splashes everywhere. And so the plastic versions uh, end up getting clogged a, f a lot less and they, they're stronger so you need less time to water all these seeds. For these reasons, I think that I'll uh, stick away, uh, I'll step away from the metal ones and I'll go with the plastics and install them everywhere on the other shelves. Now, something to note is that initially I had routed the tube so that it would, it would come from here, right? Then go in a series with all these and stop. But what I found is that the first one was, well, was a lot more intense than the last one. So what I did is on the last one, I put a T2, uh, T intersection connector and I have a tube running all the way back here so now I have a loop um, connected here to the solenoid and it makes it a lot more even and uh, if I didn't state it previously the uh, tube the intake is here connected to a solenoid so I'm using the same uh, system and you can see that right channel this is channel 4 it's on and it's uh, basically watering my plants right now so there we go. I'm really happy of how this turned out. I'm glad that I tried two different systems. Uh, I will let this run for roughly five minutes, let all the seeds get soaked and all the soil under get soaked. After all, let it rest for a bit, water it a bit more later. And uh, of course the light will be off. Right now I have them on for this video, but generally I have them off. So this wraps up my update on the watering system. Please let me know what you think. If you see things that I can improve, let me know. I'll uh, gladly take constructive criticism or, or any general criticism as I use this to basically improve the system. And uh, once it'll be good enough, I'll make it available for you guys to purchase as DIY kits. And speaking of which, in my previous videos, I've showcased these LED bars, right? Uh, with my custom power supply adapter. So you turn on the power supply, you have a knob and you can increase the light or you can decrease dim the light and if you have more uh, energy intensive plants you can basically add more uh, LED bars closer together and I have actually um, grown mint, uh, strawberries, tomatoes, peppers with these lights as well as these microgreens right and so these lights I've received emails uh, from people wanting to purchase them unfortunately I have not certified the entire product as a whole since I'm still trying it out myself and testing it uh, however i don't need certifications to just sell the led bars and some of you have shown interest in this so on my website you'll notice now that i'm working on a uh, on a way to sell these bars to you and in the near future you'll be able to just buy the led bars and i give you tips on which power supply i recommend and i i don't know if i'll uh, be able to sell you this power supply board adapter but uh, I guess we'll have to see so if you're interested please check my website in the description thanks everyone for watching take care and happy growing